Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today I have here a fairly unusual computer, the Spectra Video 328. This is an earlier model than the SVI 728 we saw last year, and you could even say this is a direct ancestor of the MSX computers. I've been told it doesn't work, I don't know much about this computer, and to make matters worse, I don't have a working version of it to compare things, which always helps. So join me today as we learn on the fly about this computer and figure out what's wrong with it. And here's the SVI 328. On the outside, yeah, it's just mostly normal dirt. Obviously, it's missing that key. That might be hard to get a replacement, but it's not a deal killer. We can still use the computer. It has a slot for cartridges, which I don't know if I have any cartridges for this. So let's open it up and see if we find any surprises inside. All right, I just hope that this is not held by glue like that other Spectra video we looked at a while ago. Oh no, it is. <laughs> What are those things just lying there? Those are voltage regulators just sitting here. Is this the way it's... It, no, they must have come initially screwed on to that heat sink, but for some reason they're not. Okay, ah, oh, and this is also held with glue. All right, I guess they didn't change much from this to the three, what was that, 728. Before I take it apart, I noticed a few other weird things. So right here, not only is this membrane hooked up with glue, but then we have a little side cable, which I would have thought it's, it's a repair, but it seems to go under the, under the glue itself or the silicon or whatever it is. So maybe that's from the factory. And over here, we have two cables that are not even hooked up. So there's definitely some weird stuff going on in here. Let's take it out very carefully. I'm not going to be able to separate the keyboard, so I'll just have to lay it out carefully. But let's take out the rest of the things and see if we can make any sense out of this. As usual, let's have an overview of the board. Over there in that corner, we have the Z80 CPU, like so many other computers at the time. Then underneath, we have the video controller. Towards the top, we have a bank of 64 kilobytes of system RAM, and they're organized in eight chips of 64 kilobits each for a total of 64K of RAM. At the bottom, we have the video RAM, which as you can see, it's kind of like the beginning of the MSX architecture with separate video and system RAM. And this has 16 kilobytes of video RAM, so eight chips of 16 kilobits each. In the middle, we have a ROM and room for another ROM. Next to it, we have the ULA or gate array, depending how you want to call it. And it has a lot of the custom logic that makes this computer truly this computer. Over there, we have the AY chip, which is mostly sound, but I believe here also deals with reading the joysticks. And next to it, we have the PPI or peripheral programmable interface and deals with reading the keyboard and maybe some of the other peripherals. And now let's have a look at the back of the board, which is great for telling if other people have been there and maybe what they've done. Yep, it's clear somebody was here. We have this big bridge back here. It looks like it's connecting one of the voltage regulators. And then there's this horrible set of wires here where the crystal oscillator was. So it looks like maybe they've broke some traces and they redid some, so ugh. We'll probably have to redo all of this later. I looked it up and this really is supposed to be a 7805. It even says it on the board. So this is supposed to output five volts. And this is a 7812, or supposed to be a 7812, it's something else, and it's supposed to output plus 12 volts. And over here we have another voltage regulator, and this is 78, no, 7912, which is the minus 12 volts. But yeah, the mystery still remains of why do we have these two that are not the exact kind. It looks like they had to be um, coupled with some extra capacitors, maybe in order to be equivalent. 
and then of course they're like loose and floating as opposed to being screwed on to the heat sink so i have no idea this could not have been this way from the factory i looked in the circuit schematics and actually you can kind of tell just by reading what it's in here here it says x tau so crystal one so here is supposed to be a 10.7 megahertz crystal oscillator i have no idea what the purpose of these two wires is there's some other crystal oscillators in the video board, but they're not even the right frequency. So I don't know if there was a crystal oscillator loose attached in here or what, but it looks like we have to put in a new one before we get this to work. Looking at where the crystal oscillator is supposed to be, this is an absolute mess. This is really badly done, really badly soldered. Clearly they've ripped traces here um, they've, they've ripped the um, eyelet of that particular hole. And so, again, I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to check that the continuity is correct based on the schematics that I have. And uh, probably just redo this whole thing and put a new oscillator. But first, let's check continuity because for all I know, there's a short in there somewhere. There's supposed to be a resistor and a capacitor between the two um, leads of that. And then this is an adjustable, I thought it was a resistor, but maybe an adjustable capacitor. And then both of those leads are going to pins 39 and 40 of the video chip, which then will generate the CPU clock like many other systems. Let's check, for example, that one of those two leads is hooked up to the video chip. So. Okay, and then the other one should go to the other one. Okay, so that is correct. So right, so the resistor should be connected to both pins. Okay, and then this one should be to pin 39, this end. Okay, perfect. So first of all, in the schematic that I was able to find, there's a C71, which is not this one, as you would think. But no, it's not this one, it's not this one. It's another very small capacitor and it's just not present here. Actually, I wonder if it's this one back here behind the board. That could be. Okay, I'll check that later. But so far, that one was gone. So the only one I could find was C C11. So C11 should be tied to ground on one end. So ground, let's just grab ground over here, the eyelet. Nope. Yeah, so let's... There. Okay, so that side of C11 is ground. The other side of C11 should be tied to the adjustable capacitor, if that's what it is. Nothing there. In. Okay. So that connection might not be correct. The rest is fine. Let's see if we can figure out if that is um, C71. One end should be going to ground. Okay. And the other one should go to pin 39. Okay, so that is hooked up exactly like C71. So, you know, the soldering looks like this horrible soldering that they've done here. But maybe this came fitted from the factory, and then when they were doing all of this, they somehow took it out and they had to redo it again. Right, these, these two soldering spots are matching the legs of the variable capacitor. So, oh, which means that then I didn't do it correctly because it's hard to get to the, um, to the, to the metal, to the conductive part from the top. But yeah, then they are correctly hooked up to 39 and ground. Okay, so, all the connections seem really ugly, but they seem fine. And I just noticed there's a fuse in here, so we might as well make sure that it is working. Oh, <laughs> it's not even working. Yeah, the fuse is not working. Well, this board really has everything. It's full of surprises. It looks like the fuse was a 250 volt and 0.3 amps. I don't have one exactly like that. 
um, I have one that is the same size, 250 volts, and it's 0.5 amps, which probably defeats the purpose, but it's better than just shorting it. So just for a test, I'm gonna use this one. And later, assuming we manage to get things working, which I'm starting to really seriously doubt, then we can look into putting the correct fuse. Since there are so many things wrong with the board, I'm going to make sure that we test the power supply first, and especially because we saw the um, fuse being blown, which again could indicate that there's something wrong with this. So this power supply outputs two kinds of AC voltages. I'm gonna switch to AC, and across the top two, I think is 16 volts, and across the bottom one, there's nine volts. So let's see. That's 19 AC. Okay, that's probably good enough. And the lower one, 10.8 instead of nine. Again, that's probably fine. When, with a load, this will drop down to the normal voltage. So, okay, at least that's working. All right, let's do it. What could possibly go wrong? That went very wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop that. So the fuse, yeah, yeah, the fuse is totally dead. Okay, so what's connected to the fuse, it's the it's this voltage regulator, so the plus 12 and the minus 12. I'd be tempted to remove the two voltage regulators because those connect everything to the rest of the board and chances are they are the main draw of current. So maybe one of them is bad and we can at least isolate to see which one so with both of them removed the fuse should not blow up okay let's put in a new fuse okay and so I've removed the um, this voltage regulator. I left this one. So if it blows up, then it's likely that one. And you know, just turn it on. Let's see if we see that again. Okay, fuse is holding. That's good news. Let's see if we have the correct. There you go. Minus twelve over there. Zero there. Is it? Minus 25 DC, I suppose it could be. It's rectifying the 16 volts, so the minus 12 looks good. Okay, so yeah, it was definitely this one. For all I know, I didn't check, but maybe it was even hooked up backwards. <laughs> I should check, and if not, we should get a replacement of the correct type, the 7812 instead of this. That way we can screw it onto the heatsink. So I'm checking continuity right here where we took out the voltage regulator. And so ground is correctly hooked up to ground. And then this one, I think, I don't know if it's the input or the output, it's also hooked up to ground. <laughs> so that means that those two are shorted. And the other one looks like it was even stripped. That's why they have that. So yeah, that would totally explain what was going on. So maybe the regulator is not bad. Um, if the short didn't destroy it. I need to check where else the 12 volts are used in the board, but for sure they're used in all the memories because there are four one six fours, just like the original spectrum that they use five volts plus 12 and minus 12, I believe. They're all socketed, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove them all and then see if there's still 12 volts is shorted to ground or not. Okay, let's check again. Yeah, doesn't seem to be a short in there anymore. So one of the memories or many of the memories were so shorted that we're causing that. All right, so I misspoke earlier. The 4116 memories, which are the 16K times one bit, which are the ones used in the spectrum, use three voltages. They use plus five, plus 12 and minus five, not minus 12. And that minus five is generated at an, yet another voltage regulator, 
the 7905, so the 79 are negative, so it's this one over here. So this one should be generating minus 5 volts, and we can check that in a second. But here's the crazy thing. There's supposed to be 16K of video RAM. This is the user memory, or regular system memory, and that can be 64K, which it is in this case, so those are 4664. The ones in here were... 4864, which from what I can tell from the data sheet is just another 4664, so that's fine. The ones in here, however, were just a different um, nomenclature, different branding, but they're also 4864. You can't put 4864s in here. This they ha this has like the minus the, the plus 12 volts connection and the minus five. If you put this there, you're just shorting everything. These RAM chips should have never been in there. I have no idea what they were doing there. This is, it's almost looking like somebody just threw leftover parts in here. So yeah, and I imagine they're all fried because um, yeah, they were all shorted. So yeah, those are probably gone. Maybe those are working. So we need to put the correct 4116, I don't know why I can't say that. But we need to put the correct 4116 chips in there, The check if the regulator is working, and put the system RAM back, and <laughs> let's see what else we find. Wow, this is not looking good at all. This board has so many issues, one after another, just the hits keep on coming. I would love to know what the history of this board was. Why does it have those memory chips? Why doesn't it have that crystal oscillator? Why does it have those voltage regulators? <laughs> I don't know. So we'll continue working on this a little bit more, but this might be headed for the failed project pile. So I put the system RAM back in place and we still have no short, so that's good. It's clearly coming from the video RAM. Okay, and what I want to check right now is that the voltage regulator 7905 is given the minus 5 volts correctly. So let's see. This should be ground probably. Yep. This is, yeah, minus 5, nice and stable. And then this is minus 12, the input. Yep, perfect. And that should be going to, let's see, minus 5 in the video RAM slot. So yeah, you cannot put a 4164 in there. That's the 5 volts and that's the... Oh right, we don't have... <laughs> we don't have the minus 12 right now. All right, I decided to test the voltage regulator by itself. So I have it hooked up to a um, my bench power supply, which is set to 20 volts and 5 amps. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, there's pretty much no current draw, so that's good. And um, now I can measure the voltage of the output and we get 15 volts. I don't know what the specs are, but that's way past the 12 volts that this is supposed to generate. So it doesn't inspire me with confidence. So the surprises never end. I was looking at this a little bit more closely and I go, oh, one of the legs of the capacitor is came completely apart and it's not even broken it's just not soldered properly now i don't think that's going to affect the voltage i mean this is just i i think the purpose of this is just to maybe stabilize the input signal a little bit or make the output hold a little bit more but oh man the quality on this is just horrible i just soldered the capacitor that was not soldered correctly and we're going to test it just in case and wow 12 volts so that leg coming and done made the voltage increase from 12 to 15 which probably would have caused havoc in the computer which then probably prompted people to repair it in that horrible way and this happened because this regulator is in this loose thing being knocked around so Wow, it's just a chain of errors. Okay, well, at least this is working. I'm having a hard time fitting this 7805 in here. I don't think they made the holes large enough for it. So I guess in the end, I'm going to just put this one back. I'll just fix the 
cable so they're not a mess. And eventually we'll just secure it to the heat sink. Let's measure voltages again. Now that we have the voltage regulators on, so turn it on and let's see the input. Yeah, it's 12. The output should be five. It's spot on. Input should be 20 something. Yep. And output should be 12. Perfect. So let's even look directly at the memory. So there we go. The corners. That's 12. That's minus five. That's ground. And that should be five. Yeah. So that's perfect. Let's replace the crystal oscillator. Now let's do a test to see if we get any sort of activity. Let's start with a clock in the CPU. That's the pin number six. There we go. We have clock signal. Wow, that is more than I ever expected given the state of the board. What about some of the other activity things like read and write? Yeah, we're getting we're getting some nice signals and um, M1 and refresh, that's 27 and 28. Seven, yeah. Wow, the Z80 seems to be working totally fine right now. Obviously, it's not doing much without the video memory um, connected, but at least this is working. That's that's kind of a huge step. So I'm very excited about just seeing that kind of activity in the board. This is a good moment to pause. It's taken quite a while to get here, and honestly, we've gotten much further along than I expected after seeing the state of the computer after we opened it up. The patient might be stable, but it's still on the operating table. So what will happen? I don't know yet. Tune in next time to find out. Until next video, see you then.